I'm going to show you something that might shock you. This Clavio account is currently generating $60,000 per month which might seem pretty good, but after auditing over 300 plus email accounts, generating millions for brands like Citroen, Lumi Therapy, New Recover, and Bulldog Gear, I can tell you with absolute certainty that there is an additional 20 to $30,000 that we can add to that current monthly revenue stream. And in this video, I'm gonna show you our exact step-by-step -step audit that we do for every Klaviyo account before we bring on a client. And this is the exact process that we have used to take brands like Native Smokes from doing $89,000 per month all the way up to $200,000 plus per month. So whether you're doing this yourself or just checking to see if your agency is actually doing a good job, by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to audit your own account like a seven-figure email marketing expert. Cool. So let's go into how to audit a Klaviyo email marketing account. Now, I'm going to show you the exact process that I take when I have my first discovery call with a potential prospect from A to Z, what KPIs we go through, where the missing revenue actually is. And then I say at the end of the call, hey, look, this is how much potential revenue you're missing out. And then I say, look, let's get you that guaranteed growth that you're looking for. It's a simple equation. And rather than going through the complete technical analysis, which I've put in this entire document, this is a really in-depth procedure. Let's not waste either of our time here and actually look at what matters. So this is a live example. This prospect came to me in December. I'm looking at these exact dates here. I saw they was doing 126K in a total revenue, and they was doing around 56,000 pound in attributed revenue from email, 37% to be exact. Now, some would say 35% to 45% is actually really good. We know we can push that needle even further. I usually see around 40 to 60% in email revenue for all of my clients across the board. First thing I look at is the campaigns and flows. This should be around a 50-50 split. Depends from niche to niche, but that's sort of an average that we see. 31K from campaigns, 15K from flows. So let's go ahead and look at the campaigns. The main thing I'm gonna be looking at here is the open rate, click rate. Placed order is obviously out of our control to an extent because this is to do with the conversion rate on the website, but obviously the email, how it's persuasive, how it's tailored and the angle is obviously gonna help contribute to that conversion. But the best thing we can do as an indicator here is look at the click rate. The higher the clicks, the better the emails performed in persuading them to take action and visit the website. Across the board, around 1%, 1.2%, 2% here, it does obviously depend on A, the list that they're sending these emails to, and B, has this got some form of offer, scarcity, what is the angle of this email? So to get a good understanding of this, I'm just gonna look as a whole at what list they're sending this to. If they're sending the list to all of their subscribers, it's an indication to me maybe they haven't actually looked at their deliverability, so we'll get into that in just a minute. But I can already tell, last day for Christmas delivery, all email subscribers, that's actually had 27% in open rates from that email for all subscribers that they've sent it to, 0.22% click rates. This is a little bit low, I'd usually see around 45%, once you start sending this to the clean and engaged list, which you can see we've started to do up here, okay? And already the performance has started to improve as well with these emails that we've been sending. Now, let's go a bit further down and see all these different lists. EU customers, NI customers, so that's Northern Ireland, I'm assuming. Okay, 26%, still a little bit low. 2.2% in terms of the click rate, no revenue. So automatically, I know there's a little bit more revenue we can pump out of these emails. I would say 40 to 45% open rates is a good standpoint, and then 1.5 to 2% click rates is even better as well for the click rate percentage. Let's actually go ahead and open up one of these emails. Subject line, countdown to Christmas delivery. A bit broad, I would make this more specific to the customer's needs and actually make it more emotive to what they can get with this Christmas delivery. Preview line and last chance to get free festive box. Too long, way too long. This is going to get snipped on the preview, so you want to be mindful of the preview text. It should always complement the subject line, so they have actually complemented the subject line. I would have this offer in the subject line because it's a lot more compelling and it's going to get snipped in the preview line when you're looking at the notifications for the subject and preview line. Let's actually open this email up. Okay, nice cover image at the top. Last day to order for guaranteed Christmas delivery. Order what? What's in the box? Not too sure. Tomorrow is the last day to order for guaranteed Christmas delivery. So they've already sort of mentioned this twice. They're repeating themselves here. So we can already tell the copies not to its standard in terms of the ADA principle. That's attention, interest, desire, action. That's the framework you should be using with these emails. Shop now button. If I'm on desktop, I have to scroll past this huge cover image. It's taking up too much.
much space does not need to be this big and it doesn't really serve any purpose to be completely honest with you essentials to get you through the long days kb power bank add to cart so this is already a big no-no shop now and add to cart add to cart so they've got multiple call to actions that should be the same call to action throughout and if it's guaranteed christmas delivery i would even have the call to action as get guaranteed delivery don't run out of your tech essentials you can barely read this text as well and then they've got shop now shop now shop now so they're actually repeating i think some of the same products as well with this dynamic product block really really unorganized email you've worked hard you deserve a gift you really want doesn't really make any sense as to why they've got this cover image more shop nows you can see how messy this is right and then it's claim my gift at the bottom what do you actually want me to do here i have to really dig to understand what i need to do then they've got shop now pay later with klarna and pay securely as well join us on social media there's a lot going on here have they optimized this for mobile they have but again if you're on mobile you're going to be really squinting to see some of this text so from a design and copy perspective i instantly know that we can do so much more here and make it more visually digestible and follow that attention interest desire action principle the ada principle so that's how i analyze the campaigns so next thing i do is go and look at their flows let's actually go back to december and i'm going to just do the first of the 15th because we did start on i think the 24th and i'm just going to go through and just count these flows that we've got here if there's way too many flows you can see there's like 68 different flows what you want to do is just filter this by revenue so okay the welcome series here was that top flow that was getting the most amount of revenue uh, then they had a sms flow again i actually tie this in with the welcome series just to make it a lot easier for you to monitor what each individual flow is and you're not fluctuating between email and sms there's just no need to go ahead and make separate flows for this ban and cart flow okay so this is also an issue that a lot i see a lot of brands doing they've got a checkout started trigger for an abandoned cart flow so this tells me they might not have an abandoned cart flow if i scroll down again checkout started i'm not going to go through all of these because again you can see there's only a few flows here they're actually getting revenue but it looks to me like they've not got an abandoned cart flow so a lot of people will go ahead and set up an abandoned checkout flow and name it abandoned cart don't ask me why they just do this should actually be called abandoned checkout and then there should be a trigger that they set up for abandoned cart they've got a place to order flow so i'm assuming this is a thank you series and then of course they've got a browser abandonment flow so they haven't got a site abandoned flow either doesn't seem to be producing a lot of money from their win back flow and they don't have a sunset unengaged so they're just building up their profiles they're not cleaning their list which also might affect their deliverability as well cool let's go ahead and look at our welcome series and see how this has been set up and i'm going to change that to december and the analytics open if you can't see any analytics i always turn the analytics on someone's been added to the newsletter they've got a trigger here conditional split has placed order at least once overall time so if they've placed an order they then get put into a thank you for your order flow this makes no sense this should be in a post purchase flow so already i know there's some technical issues with their setup of their flows. This should not be in this series. It should be in a thank you series. And to be completely honest with you, if I'm looking at this glance, let me just open this up so you can see this as well. So if I open this up, you'll see cover image at the top. Thank you for your order, shop now. On behalf of our entire team, blah, blah, blah. Can you be bothered to read this? Because I can't, nine times out of 10, if you can't be bothered to read this, your customers can't. We wanna make sure these emails are visually digestible, skimmable, and straight to the point. I don't know what's going on here. Now prep guide, get access. Okay, so instantly I can see it's just creating communication issues if I can't skim over this and then it's telling me to get my now prep guide. It just doesn't make sense. I don't understand why this is, you know, the first email within their welcome series producing 521 pounds. And then if they are obviously not a purchaser, this is their welcome series, as you can see here. So open rates 50%, click rates 11% and then place order 11%. Cool. So let's open this up and see what is inside of here. It's the exact same email, but the difference is use code for your first order. It just doesn't make Makes sense okay so i hope you can see what i'm seeing in terms of strategy is completely misaligned they're also sending their second email three days after they've received their first when somebody's been put into the welcome series you want to be top of mind people have obviously only just heard about your brand it's not spammy if you send them an email one day after the other for the welcome series you want to be top of mind and keep it fresh three days is far too long okay and you can see the place order rate is on this is remarkably low so a lot of missed revenue on this as well that's the flows i'm not going to go through any more flows you can already see that there's a lot of revenue missing when they've not got an add to cart sequence they aren't cleaning that list and that also completely misaligned with their flow strategy the copy the visuals everything can be updated okay and definitely improve that performance in terms of retention lifetime value and also that overall revenue so let's just look at that previous strategy payday sale is live up to 50 
50% off, good offer. The only problem here is there's a lot of friction. Add your birthday, your email, and your phone number. I would go ahead and change this to maybe a two-step or three-step email if you really do want to collect customers' birthdays. But first step should obviously be put your email in, claim offer rather than sign up. People don't necessarily like to sign up for things because it's more of a commitment. Claim is more of a reward. Claim your offer, okay? So it's just a bit of language that we can change to help improve that overall percentage of signups. Let's come off of this. Okay, so they're currently doing around 6% with this pop-up. Honestly, I usually see around 6 to 12% without giving away 50% of the margins with that first coupon code. So that's definitely something that we can do to help improve their margins and also their sign-up form percentage by removing the amount of friction with giving out your phone number, your email, and your birthday. Other than that, let's go ahead and look at the list and segmentations. Anything that didn't have SC is a list that they didn't already have. So we've gone ahead, we've set up the clean and engage segment. So this is obviously for your sunset and engage flow. Inactive users as well, 180 day suppression ties into this flow here. Never engaged with an email is a segment we've set up. We've also set up the place order in the last two days. VIP flow as well, set up a VIP segment. There was a lot of segments that they, they was missing. We've also set up bounced as well as a segment. Spam traps, they didn't have any of this. Okay, so there was a lot of issues with their spam rate and subscribe rate and so forth. So you always want to check what list and segments they've got set up. The last metric trick I look at is usually the deliverability. Now, anything above 80 is deemed as good. If it's less than that, there's definitely stuff that we need to work on. If the open rates are low, it's because the subject lines are all. So if you want to see all these metrics and how you can actually improve these, I've included this in my common red flags in list health. You can go ahead and check this in that document. If you do want to see some more technical analysis beyond obviously what I've gone through in here, you can go through this document and it will show you everything that I know in regards to the technical aspect. But that is pretty much it. That is all I really look at is the campaigns, the flows, sign up form, and also the delivery. The only other things I would potentially check is A, the integrations. Is this integrated with Shopify? That needs to be enabled. And also to see if the domains have been verified. And you can see that within your settings, domains, and you'll see this should say active as well. Okay, so that is pretty much everything. If we go back to the last 30 days, you'll see we've been working with this client since the end of December. We've increased that attributed revenue percentage to 45%. An additional 20K has been added from our efforts and also the overall revenue has gone up as well. So there you have it. This is the exact process that we use to audit hundreds of e-commerce brands every single month. I've now worked with over 100 plus e-commerce brands and guaranteed growth every single time with this exact auditing process and unlocked hidden revenue in the thousands, even millions for these brands. Now you might be thinking, okay, cool. I found an issue or a drop off point in my account. How do I actually go ahead and fix this? And that's where most brand owners get stuck because finding the issue is one thing, how to fix it properly, when to fix this first, what order you need to take, and how do you prevent this from happening again? And that's where experience comes in. This is exactly what we do every single day to help e-commerce brands fix these issues and get more money with that email marketing. So if you want us to go ahead and audit your Clavio account for completely free, show you where that hidden revenue lies and how to fix that drop-off point, just click the first link in the description below and I will see you on the other side.